Uh, let's talk right now about the latest trans story. Is there always new trans stories? Are there not always uh, on the on the uh, in the agenda? And uh, one extraordinary uh, story that's emerged over the weekend uh, that a senior figure of Britain's biggest arts quango, that's the Arts Council, funded entirely by you and me and our taxes, has branded a gay and lesbian charity, the LGB Alliance, as divisive and anti-trans. Uh, they uh, talked about how it was a cultural parasite, glorified hate group, and had neo-Nazi supporters. This, quite by coincidence, happened just before a £9,000 Arts Council grant to make a film for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee was withdrawn over these claims of transphobia by the group. Well, uh, these comments have now emerged at the meeting of 400 Arts Council staff. They're from Deputy Chief Executive of the Arts Council, Simon Meller. Uh, let's talk about this with Kate Barker, who's Managing Director of the LGB Alliance. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very um, much for having me on. Thanks for joining us. It's not the first time, it, let's face it, it won't be the last time that your organisation and the people who work for it uh, uh, and lead it uh, are, are facing these allegations. Let's just remind ourselves like, why the LGB Alliance was set up. Tell, tell us why. Well, it's the, it's the only organisation, it's the only registered charity in the UK that exclusively supports lesbians, gay men and bisexuals. And we fight for the, uh, we're concerned particularly about the dual discrimination faced by lesbians as as women and lesbians. And we're really worried about the harm being done to gender non-conforming children who we think not subjected to some of this ideology would, many of whom would just grow up to be happily gay. And there's, and there's lots of evidence of that. And again, there's this idea that we've got Stonewall, which was the, the foremost, you know, most well-funded and, and prominent and influential gay charity, as previously had been, representing gay people, now representing uh, gay and lesbians and, 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 and trans people, but has actually stated quite clearly that, you know, a trans woman is a woman, a trans man is a man, and, and for all sense of purposes is sort of accusing, you know, lesbians of being transphobic if they refuse to sleep with a, quote, lesbian uh, with, uh, with 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 male genitalia. I mean, we're in a very mad world that an awful lot of people yeah. would just say, "What are you talking about? This is insane." But this is real and it's happening right now. So I'm I find very supportive of your organisation representing the rights and the needs uh, and and risks well, afforded to to people who are just purely gay as opposed to other issues. Well, absolutely, and we and we do see it seeping beyond. Uh, narrow issues around gay rights and seeping into things like funding decisions here. I mean, yeah. his, um, uh, Simon's comments about us were absolutely outrageous. But what I found really shocking as well is that apparently we learned that this was at a town hall meeting where there were 400 members of staff and their staff were saying we're, we're neo-Nazis and we're Islamophobes. And it, it, it's absolutely astonishing, apart from being completely bonkers, obviously, I find it really astonishing that the level of discourse is is what you'd expect from a not very bright teenager. And and why why were they even discussing you anyway? That's the bit I don't understand. Like, do they not have anything more important to discuss? Um, are you planning to sue? Because we are seeing a lot of court cases, and they've been very useful in terms of establishing the rights that we have to say that you know a man can't become a woman, you know, and protected rights in employment. Uh, but also these cases that are being brought about between uh, the LGB Alliance and, uh, and 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 mermaids. We'll come into that. But are you are you thinking about suing? Because these are outrageous, libelous comments. Well, we're certainly not just going to let it lie. I mean, what's totally absurd about it is that these really extreme ideas within these organisations are so out of kilter with the sensibilities and the views of the general public. And, and we're the people that are paying for this funding yeah. through, our, through our tax money. And it isn't just the Arts Council. We see this infecting charities, government departments, public bodies. Uh, and we see people within those organisations who I think broadly, many of them would support us and think that we're mainstream and that we're sensible, but it's created a culture where people are really afraid to speak up about yeah. it. And I think that's extremely dangerous as well, that you've got a small core of ideologues driving policy, making funding decisions worth hundreds of millions of pounds within this atmosphere of fear that they're creating. Yeah. And we're not afraid of them, so we're quite happy to, to stand up and be counted. But then we have to face the the vitriol that we get in return, and I think I think that's why people um, would call us homophobic or transphobic or Islamophobic because they're afraid that we're derailing the narrative. We're yeah. saying 
you know, the emperor has no clothes. It's ridiculous. What you're saying is crackers. And, 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 and also what they're saying is, agree. but yeah, most, the vast majority of people in this country uh, think, think these ideas are mad. But you say they've taken hold in the media. They've taken hold in places like Ofcom. Hi, Ofcom. They've taken hold in, in, in all of these big quangos, all of these big charities, uh, in the hearts of government, in big business, the HR departments. There, there seems to have taken over. And yet these are not majority of your views. If you ask most people, you know, can a man become a woman? Is a trans woman a woman? No, they don't think that. Do you think that, uh, do you think a man... With a penis should be able to walk into a girl's toilet. No, they don't think that. These things are, you know, yeah. is a lesbian is a lesbian transphobic uh, and a bigot because she won't have sex with a someone with a male body, i.e., what we used to call a man. Um, these things are not complicated to most people, and yet there seems to be this little world where they've taken on these views. And I, I put this to Labour politicians. I mean, for most of the last couple of years, could, can, does a woman have a penis? Does a man have a cervix? And and this sort of, oh, we don't know. We don't want to talk about those things. Well, no, it's a sign to me of honesty and a sign to me of sanity. If you can't answer those questions in only one way, by the way, uh, you're, you're either dishonest or you're insane or possibly both. And we shouldn't have people in charge of any public funds who are either in, insane or dishonest. No, I absolutely agree. And, and we've we talked to a lot of politicians, and clearly we talked to a lot of our supporters and, and people at the fringes of, of our support. And everybody agrees with us. Everybody says privately yeah. when we go to party conferences. Yeah. Uh, even we've met trade unionists who say, "Look, you know, I, I, I totally agree with you, but it's something that we can't say." And it really is extraordinary that a, a view held by the vast majority of people. Um, is is considered too daring or too yeah. difficult. But what, and, what, and what is it they are fearful of? Because... Um, I've got, you know, uh, uh, I, I get accused of being transphobic every single day. The same way that J.K. Rowling does. J.K. Rowling and I, who am I aware, have never uttered a single anti-trans, I'm not remotely against trans people at all. Um, and, and I'm sure 100% that you're not either. But but, but why, are people, why are people so keen to label people in such a nasty way and basically call people bigots for expressing views which are not just majority and mainstream, but are clearly backed up by biological fact? I think it, it has to come from um, a, a, a sort of a discourse, the idea of no debate, that the, the, and, and that's come very much from Stonewall, mm. um, that in some way we're debating the right of somebody to exist, which is clearly nonsense. What yeah. we're debating is sometimes there's a clash of rights, so it's important that we're able to talk about it like grown-ups, yes. discover where those clash of rights occur, and let's talk together about how we can achieve equality and dignity and respect for everybody. Without yeah. throwing names around. I mean, and added to this, because at UCAS, the body where does your university application, so millions of youngsters are dealing with them, they plan to ask student applicants for gender identity rather than their sex. That's been criticised by 70 academics in an open letter to education ministers. I mean, the, the madness, in my view, goes on and on. It's totally irrelevant what, what sexual identity you think you have or gender identity. I couldn't care less. Anything is interesting. Are you a man or you a woman these these forms should be about facts nothing else yes and it is fundamental when it comes to things like academic life how are we to measure for example um whether male or female students are be, are doing better or worse you know if the data is so um degraded yeah it's going to have really big impacts on health on education um, how can we measure the gender pay gap, for example, if we don't know, if we're afraid to ask people whether they're male or female? Yeah, exactly. Um, so all, of the, all of those issues, are they're really common sense. And, and when you lay them out in, in front of people and when you talk to anybody one to one, they agree. Yeah, absolutely. Fact, Take them off microphone and off camera. It's amazing how many people agree with you. What we need is all those people to stand up and, and be very clear on it. Kate Barker, Managing Director of the LGB Alliance, thank you very much indeed. Uh, coming up, we're going to get the latest headlines. But right now, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, strikes and the online safety bill. This is Talk Breakfast. <laughs>